This is Tiger Cats post game on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Oh, the the sweet smell of victory! What a great way for the Hamilton Tiger Cats to conclude what seemed to be at one point a lost season. Four in a row, five of their last six. 23-16 in the nation's capital. The Red Black season is over and the Tiger Cat season continues. It's Tiger Cats post game. Bubba O'Neill along with Andy Fantuz. And oh boy, you know, Andy, this one had its peaks and valleys and some strange things. And hey, we certainly got to talk to the coaches. But how do you feel about this contest? I thought it was a pretty solid game. And you had contributions from... A number of players on all in all phases. Uh, nobody really jumped off the page as as the premier performer, but just a solid effort from whoever was in there and asking to get asking to get the job done. Both quarterbacks, Matthew Schultz and Dane Evans, went out there and did their thing. Both running backs, Sean Thomas Erlington and Wes Hills. You know, five carries for 44 yards, five carries for 41 yards. I talked about the quarterbacks. We had 144 for Schultz, 117 for Dane Evans. So pretty solid contribution. A lot of receivers getting involved. You have eight different receivers catching passes and six of them catching multiple passes. All all contributing on defense. You know, again, nobody jumped off the page with uh, just, you know, noticing them over and over throughout the game. But you have... It's just a solid, solid effort. And uh, the thing that impresses me the most in the last, this game in the last few weeks has been that, that ha- coming out of halftime, that performance of the defense. You know, last game, I, I talked about the, the eight drives that Ottawa had and, and read off the stats that they had. Well, in this third quarter, out of the halftime break, four two and outs, like you just heard Luke and RJ talk about, but only seven total yards in the third quarter. You have a six yard drive, a two yard drive, a zero yard drive, and a negative one yard drive for the third quarter. Uh, that, that is just very, very impressive stuff. And you know, Ty, Tyree Adams came in in the fourth and on first down, on, in the, when he was in there, it was two yards, zero yards, three yards, zero, zero yards, but he was able to convert those second and long. So that was one area of minor concern. Uh, but he is a different style quarterback, a small, shifty guy. He's, he was able to kind of move the pocket and make some throws downfield and make some, some plays with his, his legs. But, yeah, long-winded answer. But I guess overall it, just, it seemed like a very uh, balanced uh, contribution from the entire team, which is great to see. We will talk to Coach O about this victory. We will have an interview with the player, both courtesy of Access Storage. We will present our performer of the game, presented by Hercules Tire, right on our strength. And we will go four wide and bring in R.J. Broadhead and Luke Tasker from the broadcast booth. But uh, let's p- run through your car star keys to victory there, Andy. Yeah, sure. So in the, in the, uh, the number one was first down efficiency. And this was a big, big win for Hamilton. They had an average of 7.59 yards per first down. Uh, that's according to my <laughs> your math. My math, math. I'm not including like the uh, the first and goals. You went to one, Western. It's like good. I, I'll trust you. I was a math guy. I have to. <laughs> I, I, I think it's correct. <laughs> From what I was counting. Anyway, five, 7.59 for Hamilton. Only 3.96 yards per first down for Ottawa. So that is, that is massive. That's almost double. Um, that's very, very impressive. So uh, that, that that's going to win you a lot of ball games. And um, yeah, that was excellent. So big win for Hamilton on my car star number one. Number two. Number two was explosive plays. And I set the number at 25 or more. And it's kind of unfortunate because there was a lot of between a lot of plays for both both teams between 20 and 24. Right. <laughs> but uh, they did win that one. It was two, two for Hamilton uh, versus one for Ottawa. Uh, one was a run by Sean Thomas Erlington, and one was uh, one was a pass there to uh, Terry Godwin. So uh, they won that one. And number three was win the turnover battle, and they won that one too. They two to zero. They didn't turn the ball over at all, which was great to see. We were talked about fumbles. There wasn't even a glimpse of a potential fumble. Uh, no close interceptions. 
So great job there, and they were able to turn Ottawa over on downs twice. They had a couple chances for for some uh, defensive t takeaways, but uh, they didn't quite capitalize. Uh, and I find that can really interesting in the fact that this is, I don't want to call it a makeshift offense, but it's different pieces. And they were, you know, they ended up being rather, you know, the cohesiveness was, was rather effective, and you would expect maybe that there would be some turnovers, and that certainly was not the case. Let us, let us uh, announce our performer of the game presented by Hercules Tire right on our strength, and he is. Yeah, yeah, we we wanted to kind of collectively give it to the defense there because of that third quarter stand. Uh, and then again, we wanted to recognize the offensive line. When you got your running backs only touching the ball 10 times, but getting over 80, almost 90 yards of, of rushing, uh, impressive. But if you got to give it to one guy, we're going to go with the the rookie, Terry Godwin. He, he, uh, he had... Five catches for 91 yards and, and a couple nice uh, returns to, to go along with it. So a lot of a lot of fight, a lot of grit out of him. And it shows that he's a guy that can be plugged in there if needed in the playoffs. And, uh, uh, you know, bright future ahead of him. Well, you look at the 91 yards, and, you know, it, well, a lot of it wasn't through the air. 50 yards of, of yak yardage. So the guy Kurt, certainly can turn the ball upfield. Yeah, yeah, he can. We, we talked about in the at the end of the first half that you would have liked to see him knife and try to score on that opening drive. Uh, you would have liked to see him continue towards the sideline on that one crosser in the second quarter uh, where he stopped and turned around. But in the second half, I didn't see anything that I would have, uh, you know, I was, I was never the biggest yak guy myself, but uh, I do know I can watch and, and, uh, and critique, and I didn't see anything that I would have critiqued in the second half. So very impressive showing by the young man. Well, let's bring in our broadcast crew. One, I don't know about RJ's skill to turn it upfield, but uh, we know that the, <laughs> this, the, good. the 17 had some yak yards. I'm better at yelling. <laughs> yep. Ye yelling when somebody's uh, taking it upfield. You were better at, at you know, the yak you know what Luke, Luke was good at? He was good at the, the drop step. And we I talked about that knife. Yeah. Like, Luke would have scored that for sure. And I'm sure Terry will once he looks at it and uh, gets a little coaching from Tommy. On, absolutely. And on the yak discussion, there was one play that stuck out of my mind where Stephen Dunbar Jr. did a really great job of catching a ball low to the outside to, to at the time, as Matt Schultz left. D double iron crossing and lowering your shoulders to just knife up the field for the first down. I do think that's been kind of missing from the receiving core throughout the season, really, I think you could say. And, and that was encouraging to see. But you're right, Andy. Like They do need to, to, to find ways to do that a little bit more and to get those extra yardage. A couple times in the fourth quarter, they were flirting with field goal range with opportunities to do things like knife up field and give Seth Small a chance, and they failed to do that. Yeah. Our you would have liked to see, you know, a little more of a step on the gas pedal there when they had a chance to, when they're up by two scores, had a chance to extend that yeah. lead and really put this game away. Uh, but instead, it, another game comes down to the final three minutes, <laughs> and it could have went either way. And um, yeah, you don't like to see that, but it's it's nice to win a close game. RJ, first time Tiger Cats never trailed in a victory, so <laughs> that's hey, positives. Another road win. Um, we would rather see this at the end of the season as we have. 100%. If Tiger Cats won their first four of the year instead of losing their first four and then lost four going into the playoffs, right. it's a totally different feel. So those four games early in the season, like when was that? that, that that's a lifetime <laughs> that's ago. I don't even remember about. those. Yeah. I just remember these four wins. All yeah. right, guys, I got to I gotta take you to the task on this one. RJ, <laughs> I'll come right back to you on this one to start. Uh Coach Orlando Seinauer said during the week that all three quarterbacks were going to play. Yep. Uh, Matt Schiltz gets the start, which I thought was, you know, when you saw the depth chart, okay, this made sense to me. Um, but I'll be honest, I expected to see maybe Jamie Newman in a under center role, but not. He did the short yardage stuff, which he does so well with that big body. So Dane Evans starts the second half, and I think we're all going, okay, fair enough figuring he'll clean up and do the second half. But he comes out with about four minutes and 50 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and yeah. Matthew Schultz comes back in. Did this mystify you? It, it did. I was actually surprised to see Dane Evans, especially with the, the thumb still taped up. Matt Schultz seemed to be doing all right. Uh, and, it, you know, kind of get him in a groove before the playoffs. You, you may need him. We've seen that before for the Tiger Cats in the postseason. Go back to last year, they needed both quarterbacks. So, um, yeah, it was it was interesting, but it's good to keep both guys fresh. 
Let's take a quick time out on that question. We will come back to you, uh, Luke, with this one here. But first, most importantly, we do have Coach O of his playoff bound Hamilton Tiger Cats. We have exclusive access to the coaching room. It is Coach O presented by Access Storage. And Coach, well, you want to finish with a little bit of momentum and with kind of a different looking lineup, uh, you got the job done. Yeah, we did. And we definitely we definitely looked different out there. But uh, I was proud of the way that uh, we persevered and just uh, played hard. Coach, uh, with the in the punting game, you had Blake Hayes come in there for Michael Domingala and uh, did, a, did a pretty good job with his punts. Well, one, I'm not sure if it kind of went off the wrong side of his foot or not, but either way, the results the results were there. Um, is this uh, what was the reason to put a new punter in this this week and uh, can you just talk about how he did today? Yeah, well, it was just Blake has been on the practice roster um, the, the whole year, and uh, he's been improving. And it was just that if we were afforded the opportunity to give him an opportunity to kick, we were going to go ahead and exercise that. And so he needed to get some game, some game situation anyway. So that was the reason behind it was just an opportunity to give him a, to give him an opportunity. So is Michael coming back next week? The game was awesome, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no. guys. Come on, man. This weekend, can we enjoy the win? <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to stick on the uh, special teams for a sec there. They, uh, Ottawa did a fake punt, um, and if you go watch it, you're gonna. I think it was a very impressive execution, to be honest. But is that almost, uh, you know, Bubs and I are talking. Is that almost show giving Hamilton a favor, giving you and Craig Butler a uh, a favor that maybe there was uh, something, some kind of hole there that they kind of exposed that so you can tie that up for for the playoffs. Uh, I don't know. I haven't. I didn't really think think past. Just the fact that we were ship, we were prepared for that moment, and we didn't execute. Uh, it's something that they had showed in the past. It's a fake that we had we had shown, and so it was a little bit more just disappointment uh, that we didn't execute. But everything's a learning experience, and uh, we'll be better for it. Coach O, it's RJ. Just uh, take us through the the quarterback plan tonight, and did it go according to how you would plan going into the game? It did. Uh, Matt was going to start. We knew that Dane was going to come out in the second half and start the uh, third quarter. And and then if there was if the game uh, presented itself, we were going to let Jamie get some. But we knew Jamie was going to play also in our short yardage situations. Coach, any young players out there tonight and they're maybe making a debut or who haven't got a lot of time this year who surprised you in a positive way? Uh. Yeah, I think I think a few, a few people uh, stepped up, um, you know, and I think I think Godwin really made some big plays there. Yeah, that, down the stretch. But you know, I thought Kemp played uh, solid at the tackle position, and you know, it's it's hard to single people out until you watch the tape. But I know this that everybody prepared really hard, and most most importantly, everybody contributed to this eighth win. One more, uh, coach, just with. David Beard, since he's come in, uh, six games, the team's five and one. A lot of times the the offensive line, the center doesn't get a, a ton of credit, but the record speaks a, a lot for the the addition of David Beard, doesn't it? Yeah, David's a, just a professional. He's a solid pro, and like I said, you don't, you don't uh, plan for somebody of his caliber to be available. Uh, that one kind of fell into our lap uh, when it was um, just kind of known that they were looking to move him. Uh, and again, in order to get something great like that, you got to give up something great. And, uh, uh, we're just we're just fortunate to have a high character guy like that, and then obviously this play speaks for itself. Coach, has the uh, any has your message to the fans changed at all since uh, last week? <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. Hey, congratulations on a great regular season. See you in the postseason. Awesome, thanks, Coach. Hey, Coach, you know what? Uh, one more for you there. You know what? A big win for you guys here in the nation's capital, but your uh, your football, European football brothers are, uh, are got a big one in the nation's capital tomorrow. Anything to say to those guys? Go Forge. <laughs> Shoot. You know what I mean? Shoot. We're all one. It's the Hamilton Sports Group. Let's get it. Coach. Looking forward to chatting with you during practice this week. Boy, the playoffs are here. Time to get excited. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you. Exclusive access to the coaching room with 
Coach Orlando Steinauer. That's presented by Access Storage. So, again, a happy coach, and uh, he kind of told us all, I guess, pretty much. But can we continue on our debate here about the reappearance of Matthew Schultz? And I think uh, it's now time for you, Mr. Tasker. Hey, hang on, that's okay. not fair. We've got we've got the answer now. <laughs> Coach O gave us the answer. It's like Which cheating is? on a test. <laughs> <laughs> you know the answer. It was well, all the plan. <laughs> yeah, right. It all went to plan. The uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I I thought that the the way that they interacted with all the quarterbacks tonight. To be not all the quarterbacks with, with Dane and Matt Schiltz, it almost uh, it almost seemed like a tryout. You know, I mean, it was back and forth, and both guys having meaningful time. Uh, I, I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's as simple as it maybe seems. I mean, I think that, I think I'm not going to be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised with either of these quarterbacks starting this coming. Whoa! Game. I really wouldn't. Yeah, Matt Schiltz. Matt Schiltz has done nothing but play really well, and it's hard to tell how healthy Dane's thumb is. Right. He certainly was showing signs that it was not healthy on the field at times, and so we're going to see, and we'll see what happens in the week of practice. Yeah, I wonder if it, if it was sort of a, a, a tryout in a sense because, it, to me, it was very surprising to see Dane in there at all, um, especially when he got hit and he comes up and he's kind of shaking his thumb and, and holding it. He's got it taped. So if he's at all injured, why, why was he playing today? Uh, if not to kind of let the coaches sort of yeah, get exactly. confidence in who's going to be the starter next week. Well, we don't want to start any, uh, any rumors here. <laughs> no, right? no, we, no, us analysts Oops. don't do that. We, that's not <laughs> what we're supposed to do, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, with that said, though, guys, can, can we go just narrow that down a little bit? Like, I think in his time of playing before he, I guess it was his wrist that he injured and was out for the better part of about three weeks, uh, you know, Dane Evans is the guy here. I think that's sort of what has been established. But, uh, Luke, it appears to me that Matt Schiltz can play the game. Absolutely. And before Matt Schiltz got injured, he was also playing at a very high level in the mid in the midpoint of this season. But a lot of this, I mean, I, I, the decision might be made for them it, 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 with in terms of the health of either, of either player. And it seems like Matt Schiltz is at a very healthy point right now. I say very healthy. Nobody's very healthy at this point in the season. But you know, healthier maybe, but, but but you just never know because you have to think back to the 2021 playoffs and Dane Evans made some unbelievable plays and, and led a victory in the Eastern final that was really memorable. Matt Schultz hadn't, hasn't played a lot either. He was off for basically two months because the six games and then the two bye weeks. So he came in last week. It was important for him to, to get some reps and start feeling good about himself. I, I think one thing we know about the Tiger Cats in the postseason is whoever, whatever quarterback gets the start, they're going to have to perform. And if they don't, we're probably going to see the other guy. Well, we did see that. I mean, I, I think there was a lot of us that in Toronto that uh, that afternoon in the Eastern Final, uh, Jeremiah Masoli fumbles the football, and yeah, uh, that was a problem. But the hook came early. That Coach O had not pulled right. the quarterback in the first quarter. Now, do or die situation, but he did it. So maybe we could see a situation like that. And and and, and to Matthew Schultz there, um, Andy, I mean, he's played there. You remember the last time he was the starter there with that heartbreaking loss with the end of the game field goal. Yeah, that was the that was the last the last loss, right? Of the for the Cats? Well, no, the, the yeah, they the one with the last second field goal in, in Montreal. Yeah. Yeah, he played well that game and, and uh, to Luke's point, he's you know, he played well what every time he started this year. So um, they have they have a lot of trust in him, I think. Uh, I think he's grown throughout the season, and he did nothing but but play well today. But b both quarterbacks did really, so it's uh, it's a good problem to have when you have two guys that can both get the job done. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see who ends up getting that that starting nod. And one thing to remember is that th you know there's changeups, you know, on their offensive line as well. I mean, they got to get their all their starting, you know, the other 11 offensive players back into back into their for the playoffs uh, for this week in Montreal. And so it's not totally a fair test. You have receivers who are have not been in the mix all year out there. And, um, you know, I, I just think the Ticats have been so good against against the defensive rush and uh, late, lately in this season. They let up a number of sacks today that was uncharacteristic of the last month. And if they can get back to that, 
you know, real ability to protect the quarterback in the pocket as they go to Montreal, that's going to be, that's going to, you know, do, you know, a lot of favors for whatever quarterback's in. You know, on the other side of the ball, guys, uh, this defense continues to dictate to offenses what's going on. And, and that's been Absolutely. a major plus. And they had a ton of rookies. The whole defensive line was, was rookies. Uh, the corners were, were both rookies. So, and the defense still got it done. And, you know, Ottawa trying to get their, their first home win of the season. They had a little something to play for. So the Tiger Cats going into Montreal, I, I was going through some stats, and there's really not a lot to differentiate. There's so many categories where the Tiger Cats and the Alouettes are so close. And really, Montreal's game against Toronto just before the Tiger Cats game, it didn't mean anything, and a lot of backups were playing in that. Montreal won that game. But had they lost, Tiger Cats and Alouettes would have the same amount of points. They both would be at 16 points, and Montreal obviously winning the season series. So even in the standings, it's it's very close. And these two road wins for the Tiger Cats late in the season, I, I think Luke and Andy, you guys can speak maybe more on it as a player, but I feel those are really important. If the Tiger Cats are going into the playoffs having not won on the road, yeah. there'd still be that little bit of doubt in the back of your mind. It, it bodes well. I think it puts it puts them in a situation where those first 12 games of the season are a different season. Yeah. You know, they don't even think about it now yeah. because they're just, we're hot, we're healthy-ish, you know, we're, we're going in the playoffs and they, and they believe in themselves. Yep. Yeah, and you, for this playoff tournament specifically, you've got to go win three games on the road in a row. Yeah. You know, in the years past, there's been, they've, they've either had that bye week like in 2019 or had the home semifinal. And this year, you got to go to Montreal, Toronto, and then Regina uh, for, for a chance to be Grey Cup champions. And now they've, they just won in Calgary and then they came to Ottawa and won. And so they're, you know, they've got a little track record of it. The neat part about it, too, is, and I hate to go back this far, but last time the Hamilton Tiger Cats won, the Grey Cup was 1999. It's a long time ago. At the end of the season, winning four out of their last five games. Mm, cool. <laughs> and, and, and we're, you know, 11 and 7. Yeah. So, you know, when they're coming off a, a 12, 13 win season the year before when they were, you know, clearly looked like the Grey Cup favorites, but did not win the championship game. So, um, you know, it, guys, I, I'll throw this up to you because we've sat here and tried to dissect wins and losses, you know, for what, as we said, has been a, a, a long, long season. And let's just take a quick break here before we get to that, guys, because we do have to go down to the locker room because big number 21 is waiting for us. And uh, we will connect with Simone Lawrence and, and his uh, exclusive postgame interview is presented by Access Storage. Simone, congratulations. Uh, good to see you back on the field. Uh, were you happy with your own performance? today because I think there are a lot of veterans sat today but yeah you were out there playing and bowling hell yeah um that was definitely a game I needed you know I've I've been missing a lot of injuries and stuff trying to shake back and stuff so just to be out there with the guys was really good you know um just to see things more you know you only get better with game reps and that was one of those games where I just wanted to see more and and I think I'm I'm, I'm happy with uh the way things turned out especially you get a dub here Simone, it seems like no matter what the rotation is on defense, who, who's coming in and out during a game or who's starting, uh, you guys still have the same sort of uh, impression on the game and, and formability. Form What's the word? Formability. <laughs> yeah, formability. <laughs> Formidable. 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 There you go. <laughs> Oh, okay, I shouldn't use that one. Uh, can you just speak on the other guys around you on the defense and uh, and how nice it is to, to be able to have that rotation? No, it's, it's always good, you know. You understand that uh, everybody's going to be where they need to be. Uh, we play real simple football, like um, left shoulder, right shoulder, everybody doing their job. So, like, it's real easy to do what we got to do. What, so, do, you mean, like, what yeah. do you mean left shoulder, right shoulder? I mean, we just leverage the football. We know where everybody's going to be. So it's like it's like if uh, I'm trying to make a play, I know that I got guys know where they're going to be, and, you know, we just do a great job that way. Simone, it's RJ. I think I you know the answer to this question. Who's the hottest team going into the playoffs in the CFL? Uh, you know, you always break football down in the third if you know the CFL season. There's 18 games, 6-6-6. Six, six, six. And um, we were five and one at the bottom third, so uh, we'll see who else is like that. It's, That's it's right. Tiger Cats, four straight wins, hottest, the hottest team. 
Simone, your guys, your guys' third quarter was four straight two and outs forced for the Hamilton or for the uh, Ottawa offense. Are you guys? Yeah. Are you guys playing your absolute best football right now? Uh, for sure. I think we all clicking well together right now, and um, everybody's doing their job and handling business. Um, we're super excited, especially the way we came into Ottawa and got this W in Ottawa, just to keep the uh, same momentum going on in the locker room, in the building. The atmosphere is going to be great. Um, and just, like, go get ready for Montreal. Simone, what is one thing about this bottom third of the season, the last six games, that stands out to you versus the first two, the first 12 games of the season? As a as a team, what's the biggest difference? Um, I would just say the confidence and the belief in uh, everybody's on the same page and just believing, you know what I mean? Like, in football, you have to believe in the outcome. The outcome's going to be the outcome. And I think that no matter what, this bottom half of the season, we just thought we were going to win no matter what. Whether we were down, up, we always just knew we were going to win. So I think it's the belief in the faith factor. You know, Simone, the last couple of years on making that Grey Cup run, there, you know, you've had a home game to, to enjoy. This year, slightly different. You're going to have to go into enemy territory. Is this Ty Cat team equipped for this right now? Um, I think we did a great job. You know, all of our games have been on the road against tough opponents, going into Calgary and getting that W. Coming here in Ottawa, getting that W, like, um, the road doesn't scare nobody. This is football, playoff football. We look forward to seeing you in practice. Enjoy the victory and the little safe ride home as well, too. Thanks for joining us, Simone. Thanks. See you guys soon. Have a great as down to the locker room, presented by Access Storage, number 21, Simone Lawrence, and uh, as confident as always. And uh, let's be honest, guys, if this team is going to go anywhere, uh, Simone Lawrence has to be an impact player. Led the team in tackles tonight with six, and uh, it was important for him to play. He said it was, but getting a little rust off, he missed a lot of time, and... And I, I think he's back. Yeah, I know. It's, I said it in the Ticats game day with Courtney Stevens. Where I, it was my, I had years like that where as I got to the end, I was getting healthy, but kind of had struggled to be healthy. And then you kind of need these last games, even though they're technically meaningless. Personally, they can be big. And I think Simone Lawrence is ready to, ready to be an impact player in these playoffs. Last question, guys. We're running out of time here. I'll start with you, Andy. Now it is that preparation for the postseason. Locked in for practice? Like, it, it, what's the attitude and what's the mindset of these players right now? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, locked in is, is for sure. It, I, I think it's, it, something changes. I don't know. I mean, it's playoffs from season. It's a whole the, – the new season, the actual season starts. But when it when the, the first time this team gets together, it's going to be a different era, era it, a different energy in the air. And everything from meetings to working out to dialing in in the film – uh, to practice being crisp. They're going to like want to keep some of the traditions they do, like whether they're goofing around and, and joking and trying to keep, stay loose as, as possible. You don't want to be too uptight, but uh, there's certainly uh, uh, a different purpose in your mind with every single thing you do from eating dinner, eating you know what you're eating to how you're sleeping to how you're preparing. It's, Tiger Cats haven't had a, an easy week all season, really, when you think about it. Even this final game, it didn't mean anything in the standings, but they wanted to go in the playoffs you know, on a winning note. So they've been pedal to the metal as much as they could all season long right into the playoffs. So they're not like some teams who had clinched and could cruise. So I, I think that'll probably pay off in the playoffs. RJ, Luke, Andy, uh, fantastic uh, analysis. Again, we got a playoff game. We weren't too sure about it at one point. <laughs> Boy, I think we're pretty excited as well, too. So thank you for all your, uh, you guys have done so far. Uh, we still got at least one more to go, maybe three more to go. Folks, uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats are victorious in the regular season finale. 23-16 is the final. Thank you so much for listening. For all the boys and the many hands that put this wonderful production together, it is Hamilton heading to Montreal for the CFL Eastern semifinal. Tiger Cats pregame presented by Journey Rewards. Get started on at noon. You want to listen on the Tiger Cats Audio Network.